Hey guys, happy Friday. I wanted to make this video because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube explaining farming in Rust, like growing plants and food and things, but I haven't seen a lot of videos explaining the water system. And the water system is really confusing to a lot of people. It was really confusing to me whenever I whenever it was first implemented and I, I learned how it worked myself. I want to take a, a few minutes to explain the principles of the water system and how they work in Rust. So you can see I have a, a rudimentary farm set up right here and I have water catchers set up. And you notice how they're all going downward? As, you know, they're, I have some at the top, some the next level, some the next level. Well, they're all daisy chained together like this for a reason. So I have four up here and you can see that they're all, you know, water out goes to this one, which goes to this one, which goes to this one. And then it comes down to these two. And then these two come down to these two. It's important to do them in that order. You don't want to put them from here going up. So they need to be going from top down because it, the water system in the rust, the, the water flow system, it actually operates based on elevation. So whenever you have water catchers or water sources at a higher elevation than other things you're connecting to, the water's not going to flow without assistance. But if you put it where it's all going downward, just like in real life, the water's just going to flow. You don't need any special electricity. You don't need any special pumps or anything. It'll just flow all the way down. And once you get it all the way down here, it'll actually flow into your sprinkler system with no electricity and no electricity at all. Look at this pump here. This is a, a, a fluid switch pump, and I know that they can take electricity, but they don't have to. This one has no electricity going to it at all, but you can see if I turn it on, the water comes out. It's water from those water catchers going all the way down. No electricity at all. And the reason why we don't need electricity is because the water is all flowing downward. It's based on the elevation. It's really important that you put the the fluid switch pump, you need to put it at the same elevation as the sprinklers. So if I were to put the, the switch pump like down here on the wall and then turn it on, it wouldn't work because the sprinklers are really far above it. So you want to put the... The switch pump at the same elevation or a little bit higher than the sprinklers you could also put this and and just have the the water catchers flow right into a water catcher or sorry a water barrel and just collect the water that way and then use your jugs to to do your watering i actually prefer this for smaller farms if you're going to have just like four planter boxes in your base and you just want to grow things here and there the sprinkler system is a pain in the ass you have to set up the whole thing you have to watch it you have to monitor it it wastes water a lot of times if you just have a few water jugs and you know keep them in the fridge next to it collect the water from the the water barrel and just dump them on you know it's uh it's a much it, it's manual yes but you're going to you have to come in here to plant the stuff anyway so you know just come on come in here and and water it and then you know that you're not wasting your water and you don't have to worry about timers and switches and crazy things like that to get it working if you do want to have a more sophisticated water system here's how you do it so look at this large water catcher over here this one's on the ground and then i have all these other small water catchers daisy chained up to it if we wanted to put these outside the base, you know, you have to put the large ones on the ground, but we wanted them to connect to the, the water system, we can do that. Right now, this one's, uh, the, you can see the pipe here that is going out, and then it's going up the wall to this one. But because of the elevation thing, remember this one's lower than the other one, we do have to use a powered switch pump. So it's the same switch pump we were using before, but this time it needs electricity. So it's being powered by the, the, the generator there. And whenever I turn it on, you can hear it. It's pumping the water from all these water catchers up to this water catcher, which then makes it go all the way down. So once it makes it into this one, the water, you can see the little, you see how it's uh, fl uh, flashing there for a second. It's pumping the water up into this one, and then it immediately trickles down into the rest of them. And then this one's kind of serving as like the storage unit for the whole water system. You know, this one's full, so it's going to start using this one now. So the only time you actually need a pump that is powered is whenever you're changing elevation upwards. So you're, you're sending water up and you don't have to have multiple pumps in between. So you see these water catchers, remember, they're on the same level as this one. So we don't need pumps in between these. As long as you're on the same level, it doesn't matter. The, the water will flow as long as you're on the same elevation level as the device you're connecting to. So we don't need pumps in between here. One thing that does confuse people is the the hose themselves. You see the, the green hose here that's going down and, and making the water flow? 
the hose doesn't matter at all. It isn't, it, it, yes, it, it connects everything together, but the elevation of it doesn't change anything. So, you know, if I wanted to, to re rewire this and put the cables running all over the place, all the way down there, back up, you know, take this one, put it, connect it here, bring it all the way down here, and then all the way back up, it's fine. And you still don't need a pump because the hose doesn't matter. The only thing that matters are the devices themselves. These are the water catchers. This is where the elevation matters is on the actual objects. You can make the, the hose go wherever you want to, and it, it doesn't change anything about the elevation or the pumps. These things are the the fluid combiners. These things are almost useless. I know that some people like to use them, but they're they have very very limited use. Some people think that you have to use if you're going to combine a bunch of devices together like this, you have to use the the combiners here. So I would you know take one water catcher here and then put a the next one here, and then the next one here, and then I'll wire these together and then wire these. Together. You don't have to do that unless you're using the the pumps that pump water out of like a stream or something because they don't have inputs and outputs. But if you're just using water catchers like this with a small farm, you don't need to use these. You can just daisy chain all of them together and it's gonna work perfectly fine. You take the the out and you go to the in. Then you take the out and you go to the in. You can create just one long daisy chain of devices together and if you have water catchers they'll serve as, serve as storage units also and then you're good to go so you don't need to worry about these combiners unless you're getting into the 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 big time huge farm pumping water out of the river or using the, the water filtration systems and, and things like that I hope this helps clear up some of the, the water system mystery. The game doesn't do a great job of explaining much of this, which is kind of the charm of Rust, is that you have to kind of figure the game out on your own. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.